Hello again. In this video we will be looking at how to ventilate a roof or loft not only for standard roof ventilation purposes but also for adding a bathroom exhaust vent as well. Thanks to modern interlocking roof tile vents it's even easier to install these as long as you have safe access. I will be showing you how to install a modern low profile roof vent into a tiled roof for both ventilation or for a bathroom extractor fan. First let's take a look at the vent we will be using. This is the vent and as you can see the ventilation slots are built into the top surface of the tile so there's no visible lump on the surface of the roof as there is with some types of roof vent. Now if we just turn it over you can see the drain holes for any rainwater that enters the vent on the front and that will drain down the roof and away just under this point here. The purpose of this little plastic lug is to stop wind lift and this sits under fellow roof tiles and we'll see how that installs a bit later on. Obviously this large hole in the ventilation part of the tile is for airflow and if you want to connect an appliance to it like a bathroom extractor fan a separate adapter is available usually for just a few pounds extra and they clip into place like this. Sometimes extension tubes are also available if you have a use for it and you can see how that sort of thing works. Ok so that's had a look at the vent we're using but if you want to see other types of roof vent, positioning, common and not so common ventilation problems as well as links to buy vents see the website link available in the description bar or via the clickable links at the end of the video. Ok this is the roof I will be installing the tile vent to and in this example I will be fitting a tile vent with adapter and connecting it to a ducting hose inside the loft. But if for your project you just want a plain old roof tile vent just leave off the adapter. I'm going to be installing the vent in the bottom third of the roof just above insulation level inside the loft which is also a good height to fit a standard roof tile vent as well. In the case of bathroom vents I tend to fit in a location where the ducting will lay horizontal across the insulation. This way any warm moist air that may condensate in the pipe before being blown out of the vent will have a chance to evaporate naturally. To exaggerate if the vent and pipe are too high condensated water has been known to drip backwards down the ducting and into the property. In the case of standard roof ventilation it's also common to install in the bottom third of the roof just above the insulation again. One of the reasons for this is because fresh air circulating above the insulation is very good at drawing out any moisture trapped in the insulation below without cooling it too much and robbing valuable trapped heat at the same time. Ok let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is strip quite a few tiles off from the outside and the reason for that is because I have no access inside the loft. If I had I could have poked through a piece of wire through the undersarking and the tiles from inside but I simply don't have that luxury. And if you don't know how to remove roof tiles I'll make sure I drop that video in the available links at the end as well. Here's the hole in the roof and no I haven't smashed the living daylights out of the felt undersarking it's just gone rotten with age. As you can see from this sample this one's in a pretty fragile state. It's not the disaster it first looks though. A correctly installed roof like this one from the 1950s shouldn't rely on the felt for waterproofing. That should be the job of the roof tiles. And if I just zoom in for a moment you can see the dust on the felt is undisturbed and shows no streaks or signs of water and the customer hasn't reported any leaks either. So it's reasonable to assume we can fit the vent without any extra expense or large scale undersarking repairs. If your felt or membrane doesn't look like a welder's t-shirt and it's in good condition I will show you how to cut it in a moment. The good news is though I can see the top of the insulation so this area here between the rafters is where I will be installing this vent shortly. Just for a moment though let's imagine our undersarking isn't damaged and using the powers of Photoshop let's see what this roof may look like. Normally to reveal the location of rafters all you have to do is feel for them with your fingers lightly 
And if we imagine we have X-ray eyes just for a moment, this is what we might see. And from the inside you can now, if you like, poke a wire through to confirm the correct positioning. All we need to do next is cut the felt where the rear of the vent will seat. There are a couple of ways to cut the felt, but here I'm going to show you one of the easiest. Simply take a Stanley knife or sharp blade and cut an X in the membrane or felt. Next, fold back all four flaps like this and fix the top fold with two small clout nails. What this does is to create a small upstand gutter just here. So in the event of a roof leak and the water trickling down the undersarking here, it gets caught by the gutter and dispersed underneath the side flaps and away. Of course, we've got no such need to cut the felt or membrane on this job, so let's fit the vent. Because this is going to be a bathroom extractor vent, I'm going to fit the ducting to the adapter first. Often the ducting is tight, so a little stretch around the mating end makes slipping it onto the adapter one hell of a lot easier. Once in place, tie it off with the supplied cable tie. Next, I'm going to place the roof tiles back where I got them from except for where the vent is to be fitted, nailing them all back into place as I go. Now I have all the tiles back except a space for the vent and the accompanying tile. And lastly, before final connection, the ducting is pushed into the loft space where it can be connected up later on from inside. It's now just a matter of clipping on the adapter and ducting, making sure it's reachable from inside the loft. And if we look at the plastic lug we saw earlier, I'm going to make sure that this fits underneath the adjacent roof tile. This stops potential wind lift and chatter in windy conditions. Once we know it's seated correctly, the last accompanying tile can be secured. This for me is another important tile to stop lift and chatter, so for that reason this tile will be nailed also. Once that's done, the tiles above can be pulled down and into place to finish off. When you're happy everything is seated correctly, the job is done. And there you go. Unless you're looking very closely, the tile vent is virtually invisible. If you want to see a smoke bomb let off inside a loft with these types of roof vent fitted, the links are also available here and in the description bar. I hope this has proved useful in some way. Thanks for watching.